What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, after learning uh, the basic of doing your HVAC works, your mechanical stuff. So this time around, I'm going to teach you um, electrical part. Alright, so we are going to do first the planning on our electrical system. So we will be using our electrical settings. Okay, so you specify electrical settings to maintain consistency in the behavior and appearance of electrical systems in a project. Alright, so to, uh, to do that, so all you have to do is to go to the systems and then you can select here this button here, the expanded panel here. Okay, so dialog launcher or you can also type ES for electrical settings. Alright, so this electrical settings, it determines the voltage, the power distribution systems, the wiring, the demand factors for electrical systems. So, you use the electrical settings dialog box to specify these settings. So, as you can see here on our left, uh, left pane of the electrical settings, it contains uh, several categories such as uh, general, wiring, uh, cable tray settings, voltage definitions, distribution systems, conduit settings, load calculations, and panel schedules, etc., etc. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is, um, let's say for example, you want to add a wire type. Okay, so that is what you want to do. So you want to be consistent on the wiring type that you're going to use. So wiring type can be found here, obviously, so there's the wiring types. So you can specify here the wire types that can be used in a project. So you can add or remove wire types as required. So the fields used here to create our wire type are obviously name, material, temperature rating, insulation, maximum size, neutral multiplier, neutral required, neutral size, and conduit type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own wire type okay so to to begin with so i'm going to select your add okay and then from the name here so let's say i want to create an aluminum uh, wire type so i'm going to type here al al dash and then the insulation is thhn all right so this is the type that i want and then the material is obviously aluminum and then for the temperature, so instead of 60, I'll change that to 75, enter. And then for the insulation, so I'm going to use THHN. So for the meaning, you can just Google that. And then for the maximum size, so I'll just make it 500. 500, okay. So I'll just leave it as it is for the neutral multiplier, neutral required. So I'll just tick that one. And then this is for hot conduit, the type is steel. Okay, so basically that's how you add your uh, wire type or that's how you create a new wire type. Now, the next thing that you can specify here is your voltage definition. So as you can see, just below the wiring here, so there is the voltage definition. So the voltage definitions table defines the ranges of voltages that can be assigned to the distribution systems available in your project. Okay? So you can create your voltage definitions and you can delete the definitions that are not currently in use with any distribution system. So these are the uh, uh, parameters that you need to specify when creating your voltage definition. So you have the name. Of course, this identifies the voltage definition and then you have the value. This is the actual voltage of the voltage definition. And then you have here the minimum value, which is um, this is the lowest voltage rating for electrical devices and equipment that can be used with the voltage definition. And then the, the other one is maximum. So this is the highest voltage rating for electrical devices and equipment that can be used with the voltage definition. All right, and take note that Revit does not prevent you from specifying funny voltage values, okay? So, for example, you could configure a distribution system with an 
LL voltage value of 120 and an LG voltage value of 480 even though this is physically impossible. Alright, so Revit does not prevent you from specifying funny voltage values. Okay, so for this one, so let us try to create or probably let us just use the default settings here. Alright, so let us just uh, use the default settings for the voltage definition. So let's go to the other one, which is the distribution system. So we will be using also the the default value for our distribution system. So just a bit of a background regarding the distribution system. So the distribution system defines uh, distribution systems that are available in your project. Okay? So as you can see, you need to specify here the name. So a unique name that identifies the distribution system. And then you also have the pace here. So it's either three or single pace. Okay, so it's either three or single phase when you click the drop down arrow here. And then you also have the configuration. So after you click the value here, so as you can see, you have the Y or delta configuration. Okay, so three phase systems only. And then you also have the wires here. So this parameter defines or specifies to the number of conductors, three or phase, or I mean three or four for three phase and two or three for single pace okay so you can specify it here and then you also have here the one that i'm talking about earlier the ll voltage so after you click this value here okay so you can select a voltage definition that represents the voltage measured by any two paces so the specification of this parameter uh, depends on the pace and wire selection so for example LL voltage is not applicable for a single pace two wire system. Okay, so just remember that one. Okay, and then the other one here is LG voltage. So after you click this drop down arrow for the value, so you can select a voltage definition that represents the voltage measured between a pace and ground. So LG is always available. Okay. And also take note that although this table shows or this table allows you to specify a distribution system with a configuration value of delta and a wire value of 4, this type of system like the high red or wild leg type is currently not supported in Revit because there is no way to specify the high leg voltage. So take note of this one to those uh, electrical designers. Okay, now another thing that you can consider when setting up or planning up your project is the load calculation. So as you can see here, you have the load calculation here. Okay, so for the load calculation, so you use this to specify whether to enable load calculations for loads in spaces. Okay, so you can specify here the load classification so you can click this button so when you click that one so it opens the load classifications here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select other here other classification okay so you can classify each type of electrical load connected to a panel so these classifications are called load classification types okay and aside from that you can also change here the demand factor okay if you click this one the browse here it will open up the demand factors uh, dialog box so you use the demand factors to adjust the rating of the main service for a building based on the expectation that at any given time not all of the equipment will be drawing at the full rated load Okay, so that's the idea for our uh, demand factor. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to specify here some values. So let me just change first the calculation uh, option here, the calculation method. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to select here by load. Okay, so let me select there by load. And then after that, 
I'm going to specify now here the calculation option. So instead of total at one percentage, I'm going to select incrementally for each range. Okay, so the electrical designer should know this one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to go ahead and add to load here. Okay, so I'm using here the calculation method by load. So you can specify several load ranges for an object and apply and apply a different demand factor to each range or apply the same demand factor to the total load connected to the panel. Okay, so and then you also have the constant. Okay, so you can specify here a constant demand factor to be applied to the load. And then you also have by quantity. So you can specify several quantity ranges for connected objects and apply a different demand factor to each range or apply the same demand factor to all objects depending on how many objects are uh, connected. But for this one, I'm going to use here by load. Okay, so by load, uh, you can specify several load ranges for an object and apply a different demand factor for each range or apply the same demand factor to the total load connected to the panel okay so i'm going to click the plus sign there twice this one so i'm going to click this one two that one okay and then after that i'm just going to change this one greater than zero and this one i'll change to 2000 okay and then Another one, I'll type here, 70,000. But the demand factor that we'll be using here, the, the first uh, percentage, I'll just put it on the 50%. And then the last one is just 30%. Okay? Right. Okay, so that's how you specify the load classification. So I'll just add uh, the load calculation as well. So I'll just select your OK. Now, another thing that you can consider on planning up your uh, electrical design, aside from going to the electrical settings, don't forget to go to your electrical settings. You can explore these guys. Uh, and then you can also check the other settings that you can um, uh, change here, aside from those settings that I have changed. Okay, I'll just select your OK. So aside from that, the next thing that you need to consider is the electrical components that you will be using on your project. Okay, so what are the electrical components that you needed? So for example, so you need to load that in your project like the lighting switches, okay, the receptacles. So you can load that. So let's say I'm going to insert and then I'm going to select here uh, load family. Okay, and then I'm going to select here my MEP. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, metric, electrical, MEP. Okay, so I'll go to electric power and terminals. So let's say I want to load here my lighting switches, this one. So I'm going to select this. Okay, and also the duplex receptacle. Where is that? This one. Okay, so I'm going to hold control to select both. And then I'm going to select your OK. So you click one first and then hold control. Then you click the other family that you want to load. Okay, and then I'm going to select your open. So as you can see in this template that I'm working on, the receptacle is already loaded, but that's okay. I'm just going to override that one. Just override the lighting switches. So aside from that, what are the other uh, family that you can load? So I I'm, I want to load also some transformer. Okay, so for the transformer, I'm going to select here the generation and transformation. Okay, and then I'm going to select M dry type transformer. Uh, let's say I select this one. Okay. Right? And then I'll just select your open. So that's one transformer. Okay? And another thing that you can load here is, uh, what else? So another family 
um, internal lighting. So I'll go up. Then, uh, okay, so I look for lighting. Where's my lighting? Lighting, okay. So there's my lighting, MEP, uh, internal. I look for lighting. Let's say trougher. Do I have a trougher here? Yeah, the, so I have a trougher. Let's say corner insert. So this type of light lighting. And then I'll just select your open. Okay. So basically, these are some of the options that you can do in planning your electrical system. So one of the important thing here is, in this topic, is knowing how your electrical settings works. Alright? So hopefully, you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.